Welcome Game Chasers everywhere to the second episode of The Collecting Confidant with your host, Gunstar Hero. So, the subject matter of today's video is something I'm very excited about. Of course, I'm excited about every video I do because I'm curating these. It's a new game, again, coming out from LimitedRunGames.com in a physical version, and just came out digitally on Steam, PS4, and PS5 earlier this month, March 16, 2022. We are talking about none other than the new game Anno Mutationem, coming from developer Thinking Stars. And they're based out of Beijing, China. Small team of about 30 developers, but including some heavyweight OG talent from companies like Gameloft, Sega, and Ubisoft. And you can see that this isn't any ordinary indie company. Like there is some definite high quality coming out of here, especially in the style and visuals department, which is immediately what caught my eye. So let's talk about this game a little bit. Again, came out digitally on Steam, PS4 and PS5 early this month, but there will be a physical release coming from www.limitedrungames.com, which is actually on right now, and it will be ending Sunday, April 24th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So why is any Mutashinim worth your time and consideration? Let's start with the style and the background. So. Obviously, you can see from the graphics, this is heavily influenced by the cyberpunk genre. And that was actually stated right by the developers themselves in one of their videos that they were heavily inspired by the movies of this ilk, which means they were probably watching a lot of Blade Runner and those types of films. But they also said that they were actually inspired by earlier Asian animations such as Ghost in the Shell and Akira. So you can see how that would lend to the overall aesthetics that you're seeing on the background here. What I really like though, and what is really striking is I, I'm a sucker for pixel art. And this, I've got to say, and I agree with the review by Noisy Pixel that this could potentially be one of, no, it is probably one of the best looking pixel art games I have seen in the last few years at least. And I'm, I'm putting this up there with other games like Octopath Traveler and the recently released Triangle Strategy, both for the Switch. In terms of that modern, but retro aesthetic that really shines. And this was all made in Unity. And, and what a fantastic job they've done where they're taking like this 2.5D pixel style, but in really making good use of the Z axis. So that's kind of, kind of give you an idea of what the gameplay is gonna be all about. On the one hand, you have your side scrolling, frenetic, high octane Asian action. Like, you know, imagine Bayonetta, imagine games like Icy, imagine games like Dust and Lysian Tail. You'll get an idea of the combo juggle driven combat style that is the emphasis of this game combined with some platforming. But as you can also see, there is a heavy use of the Z axis in terms of being able to go up and down and through this huge metropolis, this dystopian landscape to be able to explore the world, interact with NPCs. And that's the whole point, right? Because the more you explore, the more you're gonna unravel this huge conspiracy centering around the main character who's in. And what we know is that she's like this lone wolf, combat trained heroine who's being programmed by a doctor, Alan Doyle, who gives her defensive capabilities, her offensive capabilities. And she's also accompanied by this, like this VR holographic hacking companion called Ayane. And together they're gonna explore this metropolis, do battle, learn secrets, even do side quests and mini games, all in an effort to find out what happened to her brother. And apparently as you get into the story, the deeper and deeper you go, the bigger the conspiracy gets, and you're gonna be in for some, some twists and turns for sure. So it looks like there's a lot of meat to this game, especially if you're into dialogue and like lore and story discovery. It seems like there's tons of different stuff you can learn about the world by interacting with all the different characters. And the developer even said that depending on what type of costumes that Anne wears, you could even get like different dialogue scenarios and choices. Now, the, the costumes won't affect combat necessarily. When it comes to combat, that's when, for example, creating, crafting, getting loot is gonna come into play in terms of upgrading your skills, your gear, adding augments to your guns and your swords. But then there's also Dr. Alan Doyle who will take you into these, like, these virtual scenarios and teach you all of your different combat skills. So I like the complexity for, for such a small indie game. There's really a lot going on here and a lot to sink your teeth into. Again, the graphical style is incredible. I'm loving just just like the futuristic techno audio that's going on. And even the voiceovers are surprisingly very good. Like the acting style is 
quite excellent for what I've been hearing for just kind of like a small indie game from a relatively unknown developer. We haven't seen a lot from Thinking Stars other than like an upcoming game they have coming out on Steam. It's called Deep Battle of Jove, which is totally different. This one's more of like a, like a Star Fox inspired space dogfight arcade game. So I like what I'm seeing here. This developer has a lot of potential and there's actually more coming to the game as well. There is actually just as of like a few hours of recording this video, a new trailer came out with additional DLC content that's gonna come to Anno Mutationum at a later date. And if you see the video, it's essentially Anne and Ayane on a beach looking into an ocean and into the clouds. And you can kind of get the sense that this is going to go beyond the metropolis into all these unknown lands. So I'm excited about the potential of Thinking Stars and what they're able to bring to the table and also kind of bringing Chinese games and gaming and development more into the forefront. So a lot to get excited about here. Back to the physical copy because it's what this show is all about. So... As I said before, the game is available via www.limitedrungames.com right now for a small pre-order window. Again, that ends Sunday, April the 24th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And there are PS4 and PS5 versions that you can buy, both in Standard and Deluxe Editions. The Deluxe Edition is actually going to include not only the base game, but a nice collector's box, a poster, a CD soundtrack, Love those CD soundtracks, and of course a keychain. And it's not actually that much more than the standard version. So I'd say this is actually a pretty fair price game for what you're getting. So that's available exclusively via www.limitedrungames.com and you can get it there. So I'm most likely gonna be picking that up as well because I'm really excited about playing this game and I love the combat style. I did mention Dust and Elysian Tale and Icy, how it reminds me of those kind of games. I'm a sucker for Bayonetta style, high octane action and I, if you are too, I think you'll find a lot to sink your teeth into. So this has been the second episode of The Collecting Confidant with your host, Gunstar Hero. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy this content, make sure you share it with your friends, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Later, Game Chasers. Peace.